Hello and welcome back to my video reviews again. This is going to be a holster review of the Aegis Armory uh, Shield Holster. That's kind of their flagship product. It's an OWB or IWB holster depending on um, your application, how you want to how you want to wear it. And this particular one is made for my Glock 19. As you can see, um, it's unloaded. There's no magazine here. So we'll just go ahead and jump right into this review. It's your typical hybrid holster, meaning that uh, it is a hybrid between Kydex and leather. Um, it's got a pretty, um, a pretty typical uh, style of Kydex that's very nice and thin. It's got a very nice soft leather backing to it that's, um, as you can see, as you wear it, it gets uh, quite molded to both your body and the gun as you wear it. So um, you can see how that kind of just molds around both the gun and your body. Um, obviously, you can see from the design that this is an open mouth and open bottom holster. So there's no, um, there's no hang up of debris or anything like that. Uh, it's very airy, but at the same time, it's also very, very thin, which is pretty good if you're not looking to add a lot of girth to your pistol. Um, the methods of attachment for this, for the IWB um, particular attachments, are these metal clips here. And they have a single mounting point here with these Chicago screws on either side. So they're a, little, they're a little mobile, and of course, as you can see, there's different adjustment points on either side to adjust the cant um, one way or the other. These particular loops are um, compatible for belts up to um, an inch and about three quarters. And right now, that is the only length of clips that they offer. Um, the OWB option, if you were to remove this, the screws and just thread your belt through here, this allows for an OWB option, which as you can see that that's fixed. There's no adjusting for size there. And this also goes up to, I believe, um, an inch and three quarters there as well for sizing. So as far as um, specific things that people are looking for on holsters like these, these can accommodate your crimson trace grips if you should choose to. Of course, certain firearm, firearms have different models of crimson trace, whether it's mounted up here in the front. So you'd have to look on their website or um, contact Aegis Armory to make sure that they make the holster around your particular model of Crimson Trace grips. But as you can see, as far as a re reinforced mouth, hybrids are kind of funny when it comes to the idea of a reinforced mouth. Of course, Kydex is very um, a very stiff material, so it allows for that open uh, mouth, but at the same time, the leather is not rigid. So when you draw from the holster, it does have a, a tendency to pinch just a little bit but not so much that you can't holster, or I'm sorry, reholster the firearm. So it does kind of have an open mouth uh, feature, but I wouldn't necessarily call it a reinforced mouth. So, um, but drawing and reholstering, which you'll see later, is not a problem with this particular model because of that rigid kydex on the outside there. Um, as far as a body shield or sweat guard are, is concerned, as you can see, the entire back of the holster, as which is pretty common with your hybrid models, is a body shield. What I do like about this particular model is that a lot of times these hybrid holsters have the, the leather backing goes either all the way up the grip, which is nice because it protects your skin from the abras abrasiveness of a grip sometimes, but at the same time it can interfere with um, your magazine release. I've had at least two other um, other hybrid holsters that would eject my magazines just from the pressure of my body. And you can kind of see, if I turn this around here um, and line it up, you can see how the pressure of your body against a leather backing that laid flush against the magazine release could easily eject your magazine, especially if you have an extended magazine release. So it's something to be aware of with hybrid holsters, but because of the cut, of this, this is a really aggressive, what they kind of call a combat cut, which allows for you to get a good hand grip, but also allows for a cut around that magazine release so that you don't have that problem. 
Now, because of that, if you are a little bit um, thick around the center, you may find that it's uncomfortable to have your skin rubbing up against the, um, the texturing of your grip, but I personally would prefer this kind of a cut to having the abrasive, or I'm sorry, <laughs> I'd rather risk having the abrasiveness of the grip than having my magazine prematurely ejected on me. So I really like this aggressive of a combat cut personally when it comes to hybrid holsters. Um, adjustability, as we are, as I already saw, it is adjustable for the IWB, but it's not adjustable for the OWB. And if you are going to use it in that OWB sense, you can see that it does have a forward kind of, I don't know, I'd call that like a 15 to 20 degree cant. So if you wanted to do it straight away, but with the adjustability of the IWB, you can change the cant um, to whatever is comfortable for you within reason. As far as the retention, um, there is no active retention device, as you can see. With hybrid holsters, it's very common that your retention is um, formed from the pressure of your body against the leather holding the firearm in. This particular one is not bad um, when it comes to a hybrid holster. Again, I've had a couple hybrid holsters. Um, for being out of outside the waistband, this is pretty good. This has a very um, aggressive molding around the trigger guard, which also helps with the retention. The rivet points here, or the attachment points of the kydex to the leather, are very nice and close to the firearm, so it doesn't allow a lot of um, flexing here. So what can sometimes happen with hybrid holsters is if the mounting points are too far away on the kydex, it allows for a gap between the leather and the kydex, um, which allows for the firearm to slip out more. So the closer the mounting points to the firearm, the better retention you're going to get from a hybrid holster like this. So this works out pretty well with that aggressive um, indent here around the trigger guard and with those close mounting points. You get a pretty good, um, and of course also the molding around the ejection port as well. Okay. As far as the build, build quality of this is concerned, obviously um, there, it's made of both kydex and leather, as I said before. The leather is a very nice, smooth leather. There's nothing, um, there's no raised portions on this. The edging is very nice and smooth. Uh, it's not at all abrasive to the skin. I found it to be very comfortable to put on immediately. There wasn't a lot of break-in period. As you can see, like I said, this, this does naturally mold over time to your body. It does kind of fit to the contours of your body, and you can see how the leather kind of breaks in, which does both help with the retention but also for comfort. So you can just kind of slip it in, and it fits you pretty good. Um, as far as the... And the quality of the leather is a good quality. Um, I, I don't see... I haven't used this very much as an OWB, um, but as an OWB, I might eventually get worried about these ripping or cracking as they get dry, these corners here. Um, and I don't know whether that would be a problem or not um, over time, to be honest with you, just because I just don't use this as an OWB as much as I use it as an IWB. So that would be something to look at for those of you who are considering this as an OWB holster. Um, because leather, as it does get dried out and brittle, has a tendency to crack, and that might crack or rip. But it's not a concern I'm having with it as an IWB holster. This seems to be nice and malleable and holding up very well to pretty much constant use as far as an IWB. I've been using this for a couple months now, pretty much exclusively as an IWB holster. Um, as far as the Kydex is concerned, this is a very nice molding uh, for a Kydex hybrid. It has a really nice flare here around the trigger guard. So not only can you really get your um, fingers in there for a nice high grip on the firearm, but also there's nothing to hang up um, as you're drawing from the holster. It has a very nice channel here for the front sight. That can sometimes be a problem with hybrid or kydex holsters in general. Um, that has a very nice high, um, <coughs> excuse me, channel for the front sight to clear. And again, that nice molding keeps it nice and open. 
And when I show you the whole string and unwhole string, you'll see the ease of both whole string and uh, drawing. So this has a very nice, it's, the Kydex is, um, has no cracks. Um, something to look for around uh, the molding sites is if there's any, you know, too aggressive um, worn areas that are maybe cracking. Um, all of these areas look nice, um, bended or bent, <laughs> bent and molded very nicely. There's that nice molding around here. The Kydex cut is very nice. There's no rough edges along any of the Kydex um, areas. Another thing also about the molding, again, is that nice molding around the trigger guard and the fact that the trigger guard is completely covered all the way up to the, um, the root of the trigger guard here. So that's really nice that that is entirely covered there. As far as the hardware on here is concerned, this is pretty standard. Um, the, the clips are thin but they have been very strong. I haven't had a problem with them um, loosening on me or the screws are nice. They're, they're the, your typical Chicago screws with a nice rubber spacing in here which allows them to be moved around um, but I haven't had them loosen on me to the point where they're coming undone by themselves. So nice, nice screws. Um, the, if, you, if you wear nail polish a lot, Sometimes you'll find that these uh, clips do chip your nails some, but that's a small price to pay um, for a nice holster. Like I said, these are, are pretty nice, um, sturdy clips. So, as far as the overall look of it, and because it's an IWB holster, they do have multiple different colors and patterns of both Kydex and the leather if you want brown or in green or you know black and black. Um, I chose the red and black. I thought it was a, a nice combination even though it's an IWB holster. I don't plan on um, you know it being seen very often but I just like this combination but there are tons of different combinations that you can get um, for an overall aesthetic look. As far as the body clock and where this is meant to be worn if you're right-handed, it's kind of meant to be worn between that 3 and 5 position. If you're left-handed, kind of between that 7 and 9 position. Um, but because of the adjustability, you can be creative in how, um, in how you choose to wear it. And uh, I prefer mine right around that kind of 4 o'clock area. It just seems to be the most comfortable spot for me. As far as the... Um, dimensions of the holster are, concer are concerned. Again, this is going to kind of depend on your make and model of firearm. Obviously, if it's a really small firearm, it's going to be a little bit smaller. Um, if you're carrying a mid-size to larger firearm, of course, the holster is going to have to be a little bit larger to accommodate that. This being a Glock 19, um, the size is roughly about eight and a half inches um, wide to um, from the bottom to the top of the holster, not to the top of my grip here, but to the top of the holster, a little over, um, it looks like a little over seven inches, about seven and a quarter inches. And so something else also to note that is nice about this holster is that the leather does come all the way down to the very tip of the firearm. You can see here, if you turn it over this way, you can kind of see how the leather comes down to the very tip of the firearm. This can be helpful um, to kind of protect against the pressure points that can come from the barrel. It can also help to keep the muzzle of the firearm from being worked out. Sometimes um, if you are wearing clothes that are a little tight or you sit down and you bump something, if something was able to hit the bottom of the firearm, it can actually push the firearm out of the holster if it has a, a large open bottom like this. But with the leather being there, um, it can push up and stop against the holster and not work the firearm out of the holster. So that's kind of a nice little feature. So it protects you and it protects the firearm and keeps it in the holster um, a little bit better than if it were just sheared off at the bottom. Okay, we already tested the holster's natural retention. Um, the next part that I like to look at when it comes to a holster's retention and stability is the ability of the holster to stay in place once the firearm is drawn from it and returned to it. Um, obviously, when you draw your gun out, you don't want the, um, the clips 
to come off of the belt or the holster to move out of the um, out of your waistband if it's in the waistband or come off the belt if it's out of the waistband. But from here, you can see even pulling it to the rear, pulling it forward, the the holster stays in place pretty well. This is the same for if you wanted to be if you needed to run or jog or, or even stand on your head or do any number of, of movements. You want the holster to stay in place and you want the um, it to hold the firearm in the same place so that when you go to draw every time the firearm is in the exact same spot. As far as its ability to retain the holster, you can do a handstand or anything like that. Um, another way to do that is just to take your finger and kind of press up on the back of the holster and see how much pressure it takes to actually start um, removing the firearm from the holster. I really don't have a gauge to tell you how, um, how much pressure I'm putting here, but you can see that it's not easy. I mean, the entire holster is riding up in my waistband before the firearm starts to remove. So that tells me that I probably would get away with running, um, moving around without this, without losing my firearm for that. As far as the um, ease of drawing and reholstering, drawing is pretty, you know, pretty easy, as you can expect for coming out. Now for reholstering for this particular firearm, if you could see here for this particular holster, that when drawn, the holster does collapse just a little bit. The leather does collapse into the kydex just a little bit. What some people do when they're trying to reholster in this kind of, when, when the mouth collapses just a little bit, you'll see them put the firearm in there and they'll really start to dig the firearm around to try and open up the mouth. Uh, you really don't need to do that with this type of holster. Um, there's no hurry to put a gun back in a holster, so I simply just look at the holster, I find the widest point, I put um, the muzzle in that widest point, make sure that my finger is high enough to trigger, and just push straight down. And that will open the mouth of this holster and get the firearm back in. There's no need to dig it around and um, to try and holster it. So coming out of the holster, it's a real nice easy slide coming out, and then look, find that spot, and just push it right back in. So it's a pretty easy... Um... As far as concealment and comfort are concerned with this holster, this is a very, very comfortable holster. Probably one of the more comfortable IWB holsters I've had. Um, it's kind of like what I said before when it comes to uh, the holsters that have a lot of leather back here. They can just become too much, especially if you're really small framed like I am. I'm a very, very small framed female. So having all of that to just bunch up and get in the way just feels uncomfortable and um, you can see here on this undershirt that there's some wear on the back of my shirt from being um, rubbed up against my grip here so but that's just the price of sometimes concealing a firearm that has such aggressive te texturing on it but um, as far as concealment is concerned obviously because it's an IWB holster. Um, I only need a cover garment that comes down so far. I don't need it to cover the rest of the firearm. I find this to be very concealable. Um, it tucks right in there behind my hip and I don't have a problem concealing with this particular holster. Um, there's really nothing that needs to be modified. Um, you may have seen this on one of my other reviews when it comes to IWB holsters. I often have this gap behind because I am so small. Uh, holsters tend to be more straight than my body and I can sometimes have gaps um, that are caused by WB holsters. But that's just with me and my unique, very small body shape and not, a, um, not an error in the holster. So as far as comfort, it's got that nice cant for it behind the hip that's a pretty natural um, a pretty natural IWB cant for a behind the hip carry. Uh, you can hear that nice solid snap when it goes back into the holster. So it's very tight when worn upon the body, but at the same time it is very nice and close to the body and so therefore it is nice and uh, and concealable. Okay, what I like about this holster, I do like that this is one of the smaller profile holsters, IWB holsters, um, especially hybrids, 
that I have found out there. A lot of hybrids are either really thick, they have really thick leather, or um, really thick clips, or they're really wide, or they're just so much leather, they just seem like a lot of holster. And this has a very small profile. It's as small as it pretty much can be um, width-wise, depth-wise, and length-wise. I mean, they really do a very good job at cutting, cutting it down to the bare minimum, which is good. I don't like a lot of extra stuff on my holster if I don't need it to be there. Um, as far as what I don't like, um, there's not a whole lot I do not like as an IWB holster. As an OWB holster, um, there's a little bit to be desired as far as... Uh, I just think that there are better OWB holsters out there. So I wouldn't necessarily wear this as an OWB holster. I think it's just fine as an IWB holster. I think that's where it really shines. Um, I definitely would recommend this for other people in that, um, for all the things I already listed. This particular model of holster, which is the Shield, again, is about $55 was what they retail for on their website right now. They do make, which um, their website is agesarmory.us, if you want to go there. Um, and as far as like their warranty information, they're, kind of, they're a, small, uh, a small family owned business and every time I've emailed them either a question or um, anything, they've gotten back to me very quickly. They don't have any express warranty on their site, but I know that they stand behind their product and if you had any questions or concerns, I know they would try and work that out for you as quick as they could. So right now, there, as far as I know, there's no discounts or deals going. Wait time for these kinds of things always varies because it is a small company and, you know, sometimes orders can be in flux or whatever. Uh, right now on their website, they say their, their um, wait time is about a week, which that's, again, not very bad at all for any kind of holster, especially um, especially kind of a semi-custom made holster where you get to pick your own colors and and things like that. As far as what guns they make for, they make, um, or I'm sorry, what holsters they make guns for, whatever. Um, they pretty much make holsters for every every name brand out there, Walther, Glock, you know, 1911s, etc. So, and they have the full list there on their website, which again is agesarmory.us. I would definitely recommend going to their um, website and checking that out. There's no specific care instructions. They kind of pride themselves on being able to just take this right out of the bag and put it on body and it being immediately comfortable and uh, no break-in period or anything like that. So um, there's nothing really that you need to do to maintain this holster or break it in or anything like that. Um, the contact information, again, is go to agesarmory.us. You can also find them on Facebook by searching for Aegis Armory, and they have lots of pictures of their products there, and you can ask any questions or anything like that. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave that. And um, all in all, a good holster, a good IWB holster, and let me know what you think.